Hello, dear fellow believers. I am instructor Chun Jae Sung. God's word we will be studying together today is introductory lesson 18, the true meaning of the figurative head, horn, and tail. Today's main passage is Revelation chapter 12, verses 3 through 4. Let us read together. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. Let's take a look at the content of the main passage. The book of Revelation is a book which recorded what will take place at the end of the age, the last days. As we can see from the content of our main passage today, the location of this event is heaven, the sky. There is a red dragon in this heaven, and he has seven heads and ten horns. According to Revelation 13 verse 1, this entity, which has seven heads and ten horns, is also called a beast. And according to our main passage today, what does the beast with seven heads and ten horns also have? It has a tail. What does its tail do? It says that the tail sweeps a third of the stars out of the sky and flings them to the earth. There is no such beast in the world that can use its tail to sweep down stars in the sky, right? Therefore, this beast must not be a physical beast. And if it is not a physical beast, the sky, which the beast enters into, must also not be the physical sky. The beast, then, is, of course, a spiritual beast, meaning a figurative beast. And the sky, or heaven, that the beast enters into is also a figurative sky and heavens. We learned about the spiritual beast from our last lesson, right? We have perceived, within the books of prophecies, all figurative beasts refer to people. So then, let us now take a look at the meaning of the head, horn, and tail which are attached to this person, or spiritual beast, appearing in this book of prophecy. If a beast with seven heads and ten horns appears at the end of the age, we must clearly understand the spiritual meaning of the head, horn, and tail so we can perceive how they appear in reality, right? We will now find out the meaning of head, horns, and tails and how they appear in reality. Let's first take a look at the meaning of the figurative head. The head controls and gives commands to the body, right? Within the word of faith, the congregation members are also referred to as the body. Then, what would be the head which leads the body, the congregation members? Yes, it is referring to a leader. In the word of faith, who is a leader? Yes, you are right, it is a pastor. A leader, a pastor who leads the body, the congregation members, is the meaning of the figurative head. A horn is something which belongs to the head, as it utilizes its power. So, a horn is figuratively referring to a person with authority. Who belongs to the head, meaning a leader or a pastor? Then lastly, we need to find out the meaning of the figurative tail. There is also a phrase in the world, shaking one's tail, which is a Korean idiom, which means leading one astray. It doesn't have a very good connotation, right? In the Bible, the figurative tale refers to a false prophet who deceives God's people with lies. Let's take a look at these three things again. The figurative head refers to a leader or pastor. The figurative horn refers to a person of authority who belongs to the head, a leader or a pastor. And the figurative tail refers to a false prophet who teaches lies. Let us now confirm this with God's Word. I'll explain with two main points. First, we will look at the meaning of the head and horn. And second, we will take a look at the meaning of the tail. In order for us to perceive something spiritual, we first have to understand the physical characteristics, right? Let's take a look at the physical characteristics of head and horn. A head controls the whole body, and it plays the role of ruling over the body as it gives it commands. 
So who controls and rules over the body, the congregation members? A leader, a pastor is the head of the body, right? Then what kind of physical characteristics do horns have? It is attached to the head, it belongs to the head. And as we see in animals, there are animals with some very big horns, right? Sometimes those are the leaders of the pack. So a horn represents a sign of authority. Furthermore, in a fight, horns are used as weapons. A horn belongs to the head. It is attached to the pastor as it uses its power. So it refers to a person of authority. And now we will take a look at God's word verse by verse and confirm this. First, let's take a look at the meaning of the figurative head. According to Isaiah 29 verses 9 through 10, it says that their staggering is not from wine or beer. It also says, The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep. He has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. In the same way, God is not wanting to speak about a physical head, but he is referring to a head that leads, a seer, meaning a leader and a pastor. So a seer, a leader, or a pastor is the figurative meaning of the head. If so, then what is the meaning of horn? According to the words of Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, there are ten horns that appear. It says that the ten horns are ten kings. In the Bible, physical kings appear. However, there are also spiritual kings that appear as well. Jesus came as the king of Israel 2,000 years ago, right? But he didn't come as a literal king of a kingdom. He came as a shepherd, a pastor. If so, a spiritual king refers to a pastor. If the ten horns are ten kings, it means that they are ten pastors, right? But there is something that we must see in detail. It says that they have not yet received a kingdom. What is the spiritual kingdom that a king, a pastor, rules over? Yes, it is referring to a church. A person who has authority like a pastor but does not have a church is figuratively referring to a person of authority. And this is the meaning of the spiritual horn. Let me organize the meaning of the figurative head and horn once again. The figurative head is referring to a leader, a pastor. The figurative horn is referring to a person of authority who belongs to the head, a leader and a pastor. We have taken a look at the meaning of head and horn. But in the Bible, there are two kinds of spiritual things that we must distinguish, right? There is something which belongs to God and another which belongs to Satan. Let us now distinguish the head and horn that belong to God and the head and horn that belong to Satan. Let us take a look at the different kinds of heads and horns. There are those who belong to God and there are those who belong to Satan. First, we will take a look at those who belong to God. Let's take a look at the head that belongs to God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, it says that there is someone who is our head. It is Christ. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, that he is the head over all the kings of the earth. So who is the head of the people, the body that belongs to God? It is Jesus. Then we must become the body that belongs to Jesus, who is the head. The definition of the head that belongs to God is the leader whom God is with. Then there also must be a horn that belongs to God, right? Let's take a look at a horn that belongs to God. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, it says that our head, Jesus the Lamb, has seven horns and seven eyes. Did Jesus really have seven eyes and seven horns? Probably not, right? So as we take a look at the content, the seven eyes are seven spirits. Then what are the seven horns? They are the seven people of duty whom Jesus works through. They are the seven people with the authority that received from Jesus.
They are the seven people of duty, seven people with authority. If we were to draw a picture, it would look like this, right? Jesus gives authority to seven people of duty and works through them. They are the seven people with authority. So, the definition of a horn belonging to God is a person with authority and whom God is with. We took a look at a head and a horn belonging to God. Now let's take a look at a head and a horn that belongs to Satan. This is regarding a head and a horn that belongs to Satan. According to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says that God condemned the snake that deceived Adam and Eve. What kind of condemnation was it? It was that the offspring of the woman will crush the head of the snake. This is something that will take place in the future, right? If so, then how will this snake from the time of Adam appear in the future? We can find out from the content of Revelation 12. According to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it says that a great dragon was thrown out from heaven. But what is this great dragon? It says that it is the ancient serpent, the devil or Satan. It says that the dragon is an ancient serpent. The ancient serpent is referring to the snake in Adam's time, right? So the snake from Adam's time appears in the time of Revelation as a great dragon. Then what does this dragon look like? We saw this in our main passage, right? There's a red dragon, a beast, and it has seven heads and ten horns. Now, the ancient serpent appears today as a dragon, and the image of the dragon is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. This is what we have taken a look at up until now. Now, let's go into it a little more detail and find out the reality of the beast with seven heads and ten horns. There are many people who talk about this. People say that the seven heads refer to the seven strongest nations of the world and that the ten horns refer to the European Union and such. But what is the most important is for us to check through God's word, right? We will now find out the reality of the beast with seven heads and ten horns. This is the reality of the beast with seven heads and ten horns. In regards to the beast with the seven heads and ten horns, it says in Revelation chapter 17, verse 7, that it is a mystery, a secret. A secret is something that is not known to anyone at any given time, right? If we were able to perceive the secret, then we must give all glory to God and must always have a thankful heart towards Him. According to what is written in Revelation chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, in regards to this secret, it says that the seven heads are seven hills, mountains, and it also says that they are seven kings. Of course, the seven kings do not refer to physical kings, right? A king is a pastor. So if the seven heads are seven kings, then the seven heads refer to seven pastors. But who is with these pastors? They are the seven pastors whom Satan is with. So, the reality of the seven heads is the seven pastors whom Satan is with. We found out the meaning of the seven heads. Now we must find out the meaning of the ten horns, right? Let's take a look at the ten horns. This is regarding the ten horns. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, it says that the ten horns are ten kings. If so, this means they refer to ten pastors. However, as we take a look a little closer, it says that they do not have a kingdom. This means that they do not have a church, right? But it says that they have received authority as kings. We can see that they receive authority like pastors. Therefore, the reality of the ten horns is ten people with authority, but they do not have a kingdom. From whom did they receive this authority? They received the authority from Satan. They are ten people with authority from Satan. We have found out the seven heads described here are the seven pastors whom Satan is with, and the ten horns are the people with authority 
which they received from Satan. If so, let us find out through Revelation chapter 13 what kind of work the beast with seven heads and ten horns does and where he does it in today's era of Revelation. In today's era of Revelation, we will find out what kind of work the beast with seven heads and ten horns does and where he does it. According to Revelation 13 verse 1, the place where the beast with seven heads and ten horns came out of is the sea. The beast comes out of the sea. But in verse 2, it says that the beast resembled a lion, a leopard, and a bear. Then we can see that this is a destroyer that devours the people of God who are like sheep. And whom did this destroyer receive its authority from? Yes, it says that the dragon, meaning Satan, gave the beast his power and his throne and authority. So then, we can see that this beast with seven heads and ten horns is a destroyer that received its authority from Satan. Let us now find out where the beast with seven heads and ten horns enters into and whom it destroys. In verse 5 and 6, it says that it entered into heaven, the sky. But this is not regarding the physical sky, as it says that in heaven, the tabernacle of God is the house of God, meaning his dwelling place. And what does it do as it enters into the house of God, God's tabernacle? This beast with seven heads and ten horns does the work of bringing destruction to the people of God's tabernacle for a period of 42 months. So, the destroyer that has seven heads and ten horns enters into the house of God, God's tabernacle, and brings destruction to God's people for a period of 42 months, as we have now verified through Revelation 13. We have taken a look at the meaning of head and horn and the different types of them as well. Let us distinguish once again between the heads and the horns that belong to God and the heads and the horns that belong to Satan as they appear in the book of Revelation. These are the heads and the horns in Revelation belonging to the two groups. The head that belongs to God is also our head, right? Yes, it is Jesus. And the head that belongs to Satan is the seven heads, meaning the seven pastors. Jesus has seven horns, and the seven heads of Satan have ten horns. Then we must become the body of our head, Jesus, right? We have taken a look at the meaning of head and horn. Now, let us take a look at the meaning of tail. This is number two, the figurative tail. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 14 through 16, it says that God will cut off from Israel both head and tail, both palm branches and reed in a single day. In verse 15, it says regarding the head that the elders and prominent men are the heads. And regarding the tail, it says that the prophets who teach lies are the tail. We can see that God refers to the false prophets who deceive God's people with lies as the tail. In verse 16, it says that the guides mislead the people with the tail, meaning the false prophets. Those who follow are led astray, meaning they receive destruction. If so, whom do you think these false prophets, the tail, belong to? Yes, of course, they belong to Satan, right? We can see in Revelation 9, verses 19, as it says that their tails are like snakes. So the tails refer to false prophets. And as it says that the tails are like snakes, we can see that the tail belongs to Satan, right? I'll give you the definition of the figurative tail. The meaning of the figurative tail is a false prophet who teaches lies. We have now found out the meanings of the spiritual head, horn, and tail. As we've now found out the meanings, let us take a look at our main passage once again. I'm sure we can now know its meaning, right? Let's check. Let us organize the main passage in accordance to what we have learned so far. The location of the event is heaven, the sky. 
We know the meaning of the spiritual sky, right? It means the tabernacle. In this tabernacle, a beast enters into it, a red dragon. It has seven heads and ten horns. But this beast, according to our main passage today, also has a tail. If you've been listening carefully, I'm sure you've noticed a difference. When the beast is coming out of the sea in Revelation chapter 13, the beast has seven heads and ten horns, but it has no tail. However, as according to our main passage, it now has a tail once having entered into the sky. This tail is actually a guide, a leader of this tabernacle of heaven. He becomes one with the destroyer and teaches lies to the people of the tabernacle, deceiving them. So he becomes a false prophet, a tail. That is why the tail is not present when the beast is coming out of the sea, but appears after the leader of the tabernacle becomes one with the beast, once it enters into the tabernacle. He then becomes the tail of the destroyer, deceiving the congregation members. This is the content of the main passage. And it's not that the actual stars fall from the sky by being deceived, but the stars are referring to the congregation members of the tabernacle. So then, what kind of work does the false prophet, the tail, do? It turns the stars that belong to God to the stars which belong to Satan. What is the reality of the tail? It is a false prophet who becomes one with the destroyer. The reason that such content can be explained and testified in day is because all these events have taken place and because the pastor who can testify to these words is in. Precious believers of God, I hope you will all perceive God's word accurately and enter into God's kingdom of heaven. We just took a look at the content of our main passage, but there is something else that we also have to know as the last part of this lesson. Let us take a look at whom Satan, the evil spirit, works through in each of the biblical eras. Whom did Satan work through in each of the eras of the Bible? At the time of Adam, Satan used and worked through the snake that deceived Adam and Eve. Isn't that right? And at the time of the Old Testament prophets, there were those who killed prophets who were prophesying and preaching God's word. It was the leaders of the people who killed them. So, Satan uses the leaders who killed the prophets. He worked through the leaders at the time of the Old Testament. Whom do you think Satan uses at the time of the first coming? Yes, it's true. Satan used and worked through the teachers of the law and the Pharisees who killed Jesus, who is our head. They were the leaders of religion at that time. It says in Matthew chapter 23, verses 33, that Jesus called the teachers of the law and the Pharisees snakes and vipers. And lastly, in today's era, whom does Satan use and work through? Yes, it is the beast with seven heads and ten horns, the destroyer who brings destruction to God's tabernacle. Fellow believers, there is something that we must think about. When you see a person from the outside, every person has the image of a person, right? However, the spirit that is within that person is either God's spirit or Satan's spirit. And we can tell what kind of spirit is within that person by hearing his words and seeing his actions. I hope you, the fellow believers can clearly distinguish which spirit is dwelling within a person by one's words and actions. But what is the most important is that you yourself become the body of God. I hope all of you can become such believers. Let us organize the lesson once more. The meaning of the figurative head is a leader who guides a pastor. The meaning of the figurative horn is a person with authority who belongs to the pastor, the leader. And the meaning of the figurative tail is a false prophet who teaches lies to deceive God's people. I sincerely hope none of our precious believers are deceived by a tail, a false prophet. We'll finish the lesson here today. Next time, we will learn the introductory lesson 19 figurative flesh and blood of the Lamb. 
Jesus said in John 6 that whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood has eternal life. Many of the people who heard those words at that time left Jesus, wondering to themselves how they can eat Jesus' flesh. Then next time, we will accurately find out if Jesus was referring to his physical flesh and blood or if they had spiritual meanings. Please do not miss the next lesson, and I hope you can all become God's precious believers who are born again through God's Word. We'll finish here. Thank you very much. If one does not know the secrets of heaven, the parables, he will not be forgiven and will become a person on the outside. This era is not the era of speaking figuratively, but the era of knowing plainly. This is the time of harvest. Those who are harvested are the sons of the kingdom of heaven. Those who are not harvested and who remain in their churches are the sons of the devil. Let us become those who are saved by believing according to what is promised.